Pacific and beyond. This real story is the ocean story, and it is one we all share. understanding of this magnificent creature and all that it represents. While they are found in every ocean, orcas living off the coast of Iceland are quite different than those near Costa Rica. In fact, there are at least 10 types or ecotypes of killer whales. An ecotype describes the differences between killer whale size, physical form, prey, social structure, and habitat. As you can see, the differences are subtle, but noticeable when compared side by side. Orcas are adapted perfectly to their environments. And even the whale's black and white coloration has a purpose. It camouflages the outline of their bodies in the water, making it easier for them to surprise and catch their prey. When viewed from above, the black of the whale blends in with the dark depths of the ocean. When viewed from below, the orca's white bellies match the brighter surface of the water, blending with the light above, giving them the perfect camouflage. of their eyes works to advantage. It looks like their eyes are located in that white patch, but that's a visual distraction. They're actually located in the black area in front, camouflage from thrashing prey. The fin on top of the whale's back is called the dorsal fin, which helps stabilize them as they swim and helps regulate their body temperature. The flippers on either side of the whale's body are called pectoral flippers and are primarily used for steering and stopping. The pectoral flippers have five bony digits inside of them, just like the human ants. The lobes on either side of the tail are called flutes, 
and are the killer whale's engine, propelling the speeds as fast as 30 miles per hour, which can be as fast as 70 plus. But killer whales swim the fastest and use the most power when they're propelling their nearly 10,000 pound body. Killer whales are highly social animals with a well-defined social structure. An orca pod is always led by a female. Though just half the size of her male counterpart, she is in charge. It's all about attitude, not size. Because they live and work as a group, orcas need to communicate with sounds and body language. Orcas use clicks, for echolocation or navigation. <laughs> Whistles to socialize in the pod. And calls for group coordination and hunting. Development studies here at SeaWorld show that early on, calves learn vocalization from their mothers. But as they grow, they learn from others close to them as well. This is a bottlenose dolphin call that Shuka learned and even taught other killer whales here at SeaWorld. In fact, orcas are the largest members of the dolphin family. Whales here and in the wild use vocalization to communicate all the time. Like all animals, killer whales use body language as a form of communication. They'll use pectoral slaps to show dominance or to get noticed. For example, a mother may use pectoral slap to get her cat's attention. When they really want to be heard, they breach. Spine hopping is how killer whales coordinate to get a better view of their surroundings while they hunt. are another form of communication utilized in the wild and right here at SeaWorld. of the world. The orca's hunting techniques are as varied as the whales themselves. Norwegian killer whales will circle herring, herding them together. The whales use sounds to coordinate with each other and to disorient the herring. 
With the fish confused and contained, the whales stun them with their powerful tail flukes, making for an easy meal. Antarctic orcas will actually create waves that wash over floating ice, knocking unsuspecting seals into the water. Watch as Ulysses shows you this wave-making technique in the front of the pool area, demonstrating one of the many complex and intriguing hunting abilities killer whales have developed all around the world. Now you may have seen these waves crashing in front of all of you, but you can't truly imagine that a water displays until you've experienced it firsthand. Luckily, if you have a couple of guests who have volunteered for the power of the waves made by the killer whales, everyone give them a big round of applause. Come on down, you guys. You're going to sit right here, and you're going to hold on tight, okay? It's a little cold so far, huh? All right, guys, ready to get some wet? Are we ready to get them absolutely soaked? We can do better than that. Are you ready to get them wet? In this example, we see the larger male orcas surround a sperm whale forming a perimeter, while the females continue to drive the whale forward until it reaches exhaustion. The calves then move in to join the adults in the group. Whatever their prey, killer whales always cooperate and hunt together, making them a highly successful predator. everyday life for a killer whale. It's how they teach their young whales how to hunt and practice those skills as they grow. You'll see whales in the wild showing their interactive and playful side. We see it here at SeaWorld all the time. Porpoising is when a whale swims fast at the surface, breaking out of the water just briefly. Touch 
will rub their bellies on rocks whenever they can. The whales here do this just like killer whales in British Columbia. You'll also see whales in the wild imitating and learning from each other. We see it here at SeaWorld all the time. The whales here are constantly copying each other's behavior and learning from each other. behavior has a purpose. A tail lip is used in hunting to stun fish, but today these whales might just be stunning all of you. Here at SeaWorld, we, <laughs> we encourage the whales all day every day to learn new things, to engage and stimulate their minds. The whales here take an active role every day in their own health and well-being. We can also ask the whales to slide out on a scale just as orchids doing on screen to help monitor their weight. And we can even ask them for a breath sample from their blowhole, all because of the trust relationships we have built together day after day right here at SeaWorld. Now we would like to introduce you all to a very special moment of our pod. Everyone give a big round of applause to Ulysses! <laughs> Uly is almost 46 year old and he's the oldest male member of our pod. Because of killer whales like Ulysses, he's been able to inspire thousands of guests such as yourselves to help conserve our oceans. Here at Zero, we encourage the whales every day to learn new things to engage and stimulate their minds. Diet, exercise, and of course play help keep the whales in great shape. The whales here at SeaWorld have helped killer whales in the wild by participating in many research studies. One ongoing study monitors the whale's heart rate and breathing to understand how marine noise pollution from ship engines and other sources affect wild populations. In another study, scientists from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, took measurements of the killer whales living here, including pregnant whales. By comparing these measurements with drone footage of killer whales in the wild, Scientists are able to monitor the wild population's nutritional and reproductive states. Other research has been done here at SeaWorld on the mother whale's milk composition. This research will help create an effective model to understand how toxins in the ocean impact wild killer whales and their milk supply. 
What we learn from the whales in our care every day is actively helping whales in the wild survive. And just by being here today, you've supported our rescue, research, and conservation efforts all around the world. If we work together, like the killer whale, we can protect the future of the Orsinus orca and this beautiful planet that we all share.